On this edition of Natural Farming Systems in the South, meet Earl Jones, a part-time farmer with full-time success. Earl's production practices and marketing methods are the foundation of a flourishing business, raising goats and sheep for meat. <coughs> Earl is making his business work not in some alpine sheep and goat paradise. No, this is Louisiana. It's hot and it's steamy. So Earl doesn't raise wool sheep. He raises hair sheep and produces some really great lamb. It might seem fitting that a farmer who raises sheep and goats for meat is based in a town called Slaughter. That's right, Slaughter, Louisiana, only 20 miles north of Baton Rouge and less than five miles west of Pride, Louisiana. It's even more fitting that Earl chose to name his business Louisiana Pride. I'm very proud of uh, where I've come from. When I started out, I knew nothing. Earl takes pride in his work and his land. He owns 25 acres of farmland, but he raises his sheep and goats on about 35 acres some of it owned by friends and family. Earl usually shuttles between four separate properties, spread out along a mile of country road. It all begins at home, on the same land where Earl was born and raised. I try to utilize every inch of ground that I, I can. I've had animals in my front yard. <laughs> if it's got grass, I'll put animals there. <laughs> uh, that's a food source. A mile down the road, Earl owns an 18-acre farm where his mother lives. Across the road from there, Earl raises goats and sheep on land owned by his cousin. And nearby, Earl makes use of the farm owned by the widow of his mentor. She doesn't charge me a penny for using the property. So I help her with the labor around the property and make sure she's taken care of. The grandson of Earl's mentor now helps Earl, but Earl himself does most of the work, part-time, while holding down a full-time job off the farm. It's hard on my customers. How y'all doing today? Not being able to just come when they feel like it because uh, they got to call and schedule and meet my schedule along with theirs. So it's harder, but it can be done. Earl's farm has everything from chickens to geese. But he specializes in goats and sheep. Earl has about 70 goats with about 60 kids born this spring. He has 45 sheep with about 60 lambs born this spring. I've been raising goat for probably 20 years. I've had sheep five or six years. I just wanted some small animals that my kids could work with. I had cows and uh, almost anything I've done with the cows, I worried about the kids getting hurt or stepped on or kicked or something. When a friend needed to sell her sheep herd due to her failing health, she called Earl. I never had sheep before. And I brought them home and started raising sheep, and I really enjoyed it. I didn't know uh, what type of customer base I would have when I got into sheep. It was just something I tried, and it turned out the same customer that ate the goats eat the sheep. I had 50 babies the other day, and I could sell all of them within a, a couple weeks. Earl has found that there is plenty of demand for his lamb, not just in the spring during the traditional lambing season. And my customers, they're eating, they eating year round, so they're they looking for animals. If I just sell my, my spring and I'm done until next spring, it really leaves a void for them to go out and look for other sources of uh, meat for the family. Selling spring lambs at three months old enables Earl to extend his season. I try to take them straight from the mama and get them to the table. Taking the lambs just as the mamas are ready to wean them preempts the demand for forage Earl would have to provide and yields really lean meat. The leaner animal is better. So selling them younger is definitely a plus and a positive. If I can get these babies off the mama soon enough, a big portion of them will mate and uh, produce babies for the fall. Earl has another incentive to raise more lambs. Sheep are less trouble and are more profitable than goats. Sheep can have a baby and they run it along the side of their mama within 30 minutes. They do a fine job all by themselves birthing. My goats, I bring the ones that's about the kid home and keep them for a couple weeks until the kids are up strong and then I'll bring them back to the pasture and put them back in the rotation grazing again. 
I just had a, my spring crop. I probably had 60 babies born. I think I lost three out of the six, and that's really good compared to the goats. Sheep don't bond to humans like goats do, making sheep more skittish and hard to catch. Fortunately, sheep have fewer health issues than goats and need less handling. For example, to vaccinate against disease. I never vaccinate my sheep. I hardly ever lose a sheep or a lamb. And Earl's sheep are less prone to develop hoof problems than his goats. I think the sheep are, is more profitable because if I got to treat feet, I got to buy medicine to treat feet, I got to take time to, to trim feet. Sheep has been much easier than the goats. You pretty much provide grass for them and they're happy. They don't, uh, they don't eat much more than that. Earl increases profitability by raising his animals on grass. I raised most of my animals on grass for several reasons. One of the reasons is I couldn't afford to raise animals and sell them to my customers at the price I sell them if I had to buy grain to feed them out. The other thing is the meat is actually better. It's more what my customers are looking for. Lean is much more healthier uh, meat than it would be if I was feeding it grain. Though hair sheep are less susceptible to parasites than goats, Rotating the animals between pastures regularly also helps prevent animals from picking up parasites. I have my pastures divided in several sections and uh, uh, I rotate them from pasture to pasture. I try to do it every three to four weeks to go to a new pasture, but it mainly depends on what the grass is doing at the time. When it's time to move the sheep between pastures on opposite sides of the road, Earl recruits everyone available, including his grandchildren. Goats will follow almost anyone with a feed bucket, but sheep need to be herded. We shut the, the traffic down and we cross them across the road. The sheep are so spooky, they looking for an opening. If they see that gate open, they're going straight out the gate and I have someone on the road to, to turn them and they'll go straight on to the next pasture. Luckily for me, it's not down the street, it's straight across. The sheep cross the road to get to the forage on the other side. Earl has a diverse buffet of grasses waiting for them. My role in this hot climate is to keep grass and uh, to, to be a grass farmer. I have a mixture of grasses, summer grasses in this area. I have uh, bahia grass, I have carpet grass, I have a little Bermuda. Once it turns cold, the, the type of grass that we have in this area, it dies. So I have to go in and plant rye grass to you know, sustain them through the winter. because if you don't plant grass, you have to buy hay or buy feed. Planting grass in autumn saves Earl money in winter. He even plants iron clay peas with brown top millet in the spring to ensure good forage during the dry summer months. Uh, most people would think I was crazy for out disking and planting seeds at this time of the year when our pastures are such lush and green and uh, animals looking well. But uh, I'm thinking ahead because I know that the, uh, the dry season is coming and we'll have a couple months of really, really dry weather. Most folks even have to feed hay during that time. So I'm preparing a seed bed. I, I won't need to buy feed or hay. In a matter of weeks, Earl has lush forage to carry his animals through the summer. Sheep are not picky eaters. In fact, they have even broader taste than goats. One way that goats and the sheep work, um, I hardly ever use a bush hog unless I have excess grass that I need to cut. When I had cattle, I was always bush hogging and clearing pastures and you know taking care of the mowing the fields because of weeds. Now the goats, they take care of those. Uh, I look at the goat and the sheep like people would look at herbicides, 2,4-D and uh, Roundup. The sheep is a Roundup because they mainly eat the grasses. The goats, there's the 2,4-D because they're going to go after the trees and the briars. So uh, it's a good combination to taking care of everything in the pasture. The goats and the sheep are a powerful one-two punch for making use of available forage in a pasture. But Earl rarely grazes them together. I usually graze the goats and sheep separately because of the minerals that I use for the sheep and goats. The goats uh, require more copper than the sheep, and if the sheep get too much copper, it can actually kill them. To play it safe, Earl puts out only sheep minerals when both sheep and goats are sharing a pasture.
I keep it in this little container to keep it out the weather. They do pretty good. The goats are a little rougher. I have to tie the bucket up. But the uh, sheep, they'll they'll walk up and walk and stick their head in and, and get what they need and then leave. It's critical to keep an automatically refillable water trough nearby. As I'm moving from pasture to pasture, it follows the animal. I just disconnect the hose on the other end, pour the water out, bring the trough and hook it up to the same sort of setup at the next paddock. Earl is profitable, not just because he chooses to raise sheep, but because of the sheep he chooses to raise. I, I raise hair sheep. The hair sheep, uh, uh, they actually shed hair. And the wool sheep is real thick wool and uh, it, it holds a lot of heat. I have one sheep that's wool and I have to uh, shear it once a year because of uh, it's just so hot down here. The hair sheep shed plenty of hair, but it's not practical to make fiber products with it. Earl's interest is meat, not wool. The two breeds I, I mainly have is uh, Katahdin and the Barbado. I pick and choose which animals I breed together for a certain outcome, and when I get that outcome, it just gives me a lot of pride. I like the Katahdin because of the size and the speed that they grow, and uh, they seem to fit this area, you know, fairly well with the temperatures we have. It can get up 95 to 100 degrees in the July, August, September time frame in this area when the humidity, which is almost every day, it was 90% to 100%, it feels like 125. It's, you know, it really is it's, it's hot. The sheep, as long as I provide shade for them, they do well. Uh, by that time, they, they've shedded all that winter hair and they slicked out and they, they, they do pretty good. They are breeds that's probably more media than the Katahdin, but when you factor in the parasite resistance and the, the great feed on the Katahdin, it works out better for me to just use a Katahdin. Earl produces high quality animals, as can be seen here as he shows veterinarian Ann Wells a lamb ready to be sold. This lamb is nearly three months old and already weighs 50 to 60 pounds. This is one of my spring babies here. Uh, he was born uh, sometime between the middle of February and the end of February. Uh, they're doing really well. They I, sure are. I know you've uh, you've seen my ram. Yes. You, you yes. like him a lot. Yes, but I'm too. seeing a lot of that rump in these babies. And that's the first thing I noticed about these lambs is that leg yeah, is they, terrific. I mean, I, we dressed one out yesterday. Yeah. I was so proud. So what I'm looking at, here's the end of the rib. Here's the hip bone. So here's the, here's the loin right here. Mm -hmm. And you can actually measure every animal like that. Mm -hmm. You know, you get in the habit of doing that, then you're gonna, so then you know that, okay, here's okay. the loin length here. Right, so when I'm picking my females, I really uh -huh. need to pay a, See, attention to the, that. See, because the longer that is, then the thicker, you know, the more chops that you can get, or right. just the longer the loin is for those that are just keeping the loin whole. Earl has learned many production techniques to keep his farm successful, and he knows the importance of a good rotational grazing system. For that, you've got to have fences. If I'm uh, talking to someone who's just starting, the first thing I tell them is to spend time to get your fencing and your place set up for your animals. You know, take time to section your, your pasture off and divide it so you can rotate them. The net wire is a better solution for uh, predator control. Uh, you can put all electric wire, but uh, a coyote or something can run through it. Deers can tear it down. Also have a strand of barbed wire at the bottom that keep the predators from uh, really raising the net wire up and getting inside the pasture. These two strands is offset. This is electric wire. And what this does is a couple things. It protects the net wire from uh, animals that may have horns to stick their head through and get caught. And it also protects your wire from the animals rubbing and uh, you know uh, trying to get the loose fur off in, uh, after winter time. But if you're in a in a uh, confined space, uh, in a pasture, and you want to subdivide, electric wire is the way to go. It's much cheaper, easier to move. If you uh, subdivide in your pastures, I would uh, suggest electric wire. With a lane down the middle and pastures on each side, Earl can easily make a corral when he needs to closely inspect sheep. All I need to do is close this panel to uh, shut them off on this end of the lane, and then I can uh, catch them and, and go through the ones we need to treat today. We'll close this end off, and once they end, we'll close the gate.
nice pink eyes. She's she don't have any parasites. Good and healthy. She's a nice you. But one of the things I noticed, she had a limp. That's not good. Okay, I see the problem. She's got an infected toe. It's not a regular hoof problem. Out of 45 head of sheep, Earl only finds a handful with hoof problems. I hardly ever do anything with my sheep. They're really strong. The goats, uh, on a regular basis, I have to trim their hooves at least twice a summer and probably three or four times during the winter. Medical problems are relatively uncommon with sheep, but Earl knows to take action when it's needed. One of the things I've learned uh, to improve your herd, and I start out with hardly anything, is not being afraid to cull. Even your favorite animals, if they're not producing or they, if they have a problem, you increasing your problem if you keep them and keep their babies. So you gotta cull, and that really, I think that's helped me more than anything I've done in the last few years is coming to that realization that I need to let some animals go. This is a, a case of hoof skull, not hoof rot, but hoof skull. It just sore right between the two toes, mainly for moisture, uh, an easy fix. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of profit. Earl keeps his animals safe from predators with help from Pyrenees, a popular livestock guard dog. I really like the Pyrenees uh, because uh, they are a real docile dog and they really care about the animals. The only drawback of Pyrenees is, is that they prefer wide open spaces, so Earl crafted his own solution. I actually build a yoke out of PVC pipe and put on my dog to keep him from going under the fence. Earl's production practices have yielded some of the best lamb in his region, and his marketing practices have yielded a steady flow of customers. Well, when I started, it was to the local people in my community. People are looking for, you know, a way to eat healthier. I'll take that black one right there. That'll be fine. You take the black one? And when they can find local meat here, they can look at the farm, see the farm, see the animals. It's just a win-win for everybody. They'll pay a premium to get that. And other ethnic groups came in looking for the product because that was their main source of meat. The Hispanics, Middle Eastern countries, African, Jamaican. Earl doesn't need to take his animals to market. The customers come to him. I sell straight off my farm. Most of my animals leave here alive and the people take them and process them themselves. In my parish here in Louisiana, it's okay for me to slaughter my animals for myself at any time, as much as I want. And it's okay for me to assist other people. I can't slaughter animals and say, bring it and sell meat. But if you buy an animal from me and you don't have a place to slaughter your animal, I can let you use my processing area. Earl has built his business on good word of mouth and he never misses an opportunity. I had a cousin, uh, he's Muslim. He came to this area to live. He uh, introduced me to a lot of his friends and his church members. And uh, I got a lot of customers that way. I heard of them having an event at the mosque and um, I offered my horse for them to give rise to the kids. So I brought my horse and my business cards and uh, we had a good time. The, the word of mouth has worked for me and really trying to give the customers what they want. I work hard to, to give them a product that they really appreciate. It's very profitable, especially when you compare it to cattle. It's well over 50% more profit per acre looking at uh, goat and sheep. Especially for a small farmer, they don't have many acres. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Earl. Eat well. All right. <laughs> I Earl that, is conscientious about maximizing his profit, but he keeps track of his profits by using simple accounting methods. It's, it's very simple to do. Anyone can do this. These are the re receipts that the money coming in, this is the money going out. I'll save those receipts, and I probably should do it more regularly, but I'll wait till the end of the year and I told them all up and I use an Excel spreadsheet. I document it, take the difference, that's what I made for the year. And it's easy, to, anyone can do that. With Earl's skills and his positive attitude, Louisiana Pride is bound to keep growing. I love what I'm doing, I like to expand. If property come available, I like to grow even more. I can only see the market increasing. 
I think I will probably be doing this until I just can't do it. I don't need to go around the world to, to be happy. I can sit on the tailgate of my truck and watch my animals graze in a, a big lush pasture and I get all the enjoyment I need right there.